Right then, welcome back. Right, you remember I said that the uh, in the last one that the Defender shoes are all exactly the same, and I showed you two shoes. Right, I'm going to make a point here because it, it's not actually true, and I found a statement from uh, one of my uh, apprentices a few years ago, oh yeah, that's all right, they're all the same. Well, actually they're not, because all brake shoes have leading and trailing um, ends to them. In the diagram here in the workshop manual, you can clearly see a difference, can't you? And I'm glad Red90 Rover actually commented that the shoes are not the same because they're not. So what I'll do is I'll show you here, and this was a mistake that Apprentice made a, a couple of years ago was working under me. He'd actually just taken two shoes, oh, they look the same, fitted them, and then fitted the other two on the other side without paying much attention. All right, so you can clearly see here that there are um, leading uh, trailing edges, okay, and uh, the shoes are, well, you can see this. Now, this is a big point you've got to remember. Now, you're going to be shocked. You think, oh, well, you're just trying to get out of it because somebody pulled you up. But no, I stripped this axle down. And what I found was uh, two uh, trailing edges and two leading edges. So perhaps the guy had thought, oh, well, these are just left and right hand pairs like such. Obviously, he's got the, uh, the Squirting Rocket Award for this because... Um, yeah, you can see you've got your leading edge and you've got a leading edge on this one as well, which is wrong. Completely wrong. So I'll put a shooting rocket just to remind me uh, which side is which. Um, one's the offside and one's the near side. Now with uh, two uh, trailing edges, you'll probably actually find that they'll bind up on that side. Um, very, very poor fitting. And uh, this is a problem that I come across quite a lot with uh, older Land Rovers is that stuff is not fitted correctly. I know we're all human, however, uh, another example here is the hub seal's fitted around the wrong way, so the hub seal's blown, okay, it actually fits in this way, okay, just out of information, and I find this quite a lot. So I've told you about the trailing and the leading shoes, and I'll go on about it again, and it's vitally important. What somebody did actually tell me on uh, Facebook is that uh, that somebody did this to their old uh, 110 and it actually locked the uh, back axle up and flipped it not good huh so anyway i'll just show you this uh, locking tab as well this is uh, quite amusing it's bent the wrong way and uh, you can see the top edge is bent inwards towards the uh, adjuster nut okay and what the uh, tab plate should do is actually bend around to lock the locking nut as well okay it's just to stop it from shifting uh, however, if it's not tight enough, that will come undone. And uh, you can see that's bent round towards the adjuster nut. Right, so, yeah, I mean, when I look at things like that, I'm uh, very suspicious how much more um, has been put wrong. So I've already shown you what I found. Anyway, to the workshop manual, uh, Land Rover workshop manual, uh, it does say something about a uh, leading shoe, but it's uh, more about the uh, handbrake system, whereas uh, on the wheel base there are no, there's, there's no real reference to which way the shoes go around. And basically with Land Rover, the workshop manuals are for their technicians and they will expect you to have, um, for instance, a City and Guilds qualification uh, before you go on to trade training, for instance. So they won't really cover every nook and cranny of, of, of the information. This is why I've impressed it very strongly. Uh, it's important. But you can read this um, if you like. I can give you a link below where you can find the workshop manuals, but I've found nothing that describes which way the, the leading and trailing shoes are set. Okay, um, basically that's about all you get. A bit further down, you have the uh, handbrake drum and the way the shoes are set, and the picture will actually show you which way round the leading shoe goes, which is at the top, okay? Now that's about it basically, other than they show you the springs and how they fit and they do show you that you have a leading and a trailing shoe, but other than that, that is about it. Other than the fact that when I see things on Facebook and I see things on forums, sometimes I get something called cognitive dissonance, which uh, it, to me it means that what I'm actually reading and what I'm hearing isn't what is reality. So lesson here is when you listen to somebody actually check up yourself and find out more don't just take it on uh, gospel that that is exactly what it is but i'm here to to train you and i've got a lot more to show you before i actually give all this up so we'll continue now 
Right then, what we have is the rear axle on some axle stands. We'll just have to imagine it's on a vehicle, doesn't matter. Axle stands taking away the vehicle, so it's not going to roll anywhere. So, back in plates here, you have two adjusters. Okay, two snail cam adjusters, and you use these to wind the brakes off. You can see on the other side of the backing plate, there's the snail cams, and that's the same on the other side. And uh, wind them off and rotate the wheel at the same time, you'll know which way they are de-adjusted. So uh, de-adjust them and do it for all four. This will wind the shoes off. The brake drum is retained on the hub by a screw, which you can see down there, and they can be a bit of a pain to remove. You can use uh, an impact screwdriver, perhaps, or maybe a chisel, it depends. If this will come off by using an impact driver, no problem. You can see the screw is just turned there. If it's stuck, rusted in, then maybe you need to use some more force, but luckily this one's okay. You can use a chisel and angle it like that and then smack it with a hammer and this will uh, remove it. If it's really, really solid, which I doubt, then you may have to resort to a drill, but this is okay, this has come undone. So there are two ways to tap the drum off. One is using an idiot's hammer and the other is using a copper hammer. Idiot's hammer will crack the drum and a sensible hammer, which is rawhide or copper end, will make sure that the drum doesn't get damaged. So you knock it and it should come off. It will break the uh, rust seal between the drum and the hub, hopefully, and then it will slide off. There is a threaded hole in the brake drum which will assist you if you need to to wind a bolt in, put pressure on, which will help you remove the drum. But in reality, you need two on opposite sides of each other, which will put pressure on the drum and then it will slide off. But these are easy enough to take off like so. And then what you have is exposure to the brake shoes. Um, the brake drum itself, obviously you want to check the condition to see whether it's grooved or um, scored or whatever. This one's in not bad condition actually. We'll come back to that in a minute. Right, um, what I usually do is not bother having this situation because it's a real pig to actually get the uh, springs off. I'm just checking here to see what sort of condition the brakes are in and they have got uh, oil on them. What I do, just to cut things short, take the half shafts out. Um, slip the uh, front bearing out and then wiggle this to um, get the drum and the hub off in one go. This is one way of doing it and this is my preferred way because then I get the whole lot together. The shoes, the wheel cylinder, the springs and everything else are exposed. Bonus here obviously is then, like I said before, you can check the stub axle. This stub axle actually had the front bearing rusted in. That was quite awkward to get off. You can wiggle the hub off with the wheel on, okay. Anyway, so the next thing to do is to remove the shoes, uh, screwdriver, and uh, everything should come undone. Basically, at the bottom here, they do get corroded into place. A little tap with a hammer, and then that's out. That's the shoes that are stripped off, okay? Remember which way the springs go round. In this case, the brake shoes were um, set wrong. Just be aware of that. Okay, so the backing plate we're going to take off. It has adjusters which can seize up, wheel cylinders that can fail, like this one's absolutely solid. And uh, I'll actually pull this off to show you underneath. It's bone dry, look at that. That's screwed, so that needs replacing, which is an easy job. It's, uh, it's one of those sort of no-brainer things. There's only two bolts holding it on. Anyway, the back plate is held on by its six bolts, which also hold the stub axle on, okay? That's nut and bolt. Once they're undone, the uh, backing plate can then come off. If, for instance, the backing plate is in good condition, just clean it up and check the adjusters are in good condition. Right, so you have a um, ring here, which uh, you remove first of all, the backing plate, if you're gonna take them off. It's stuck into place and you will need a, a little bit of a tap to get that off. So, okay, so the brakes are stripped down completely there. All right, um, the other thing is really is components. Now, if you see these uh, drive flanges, they are worn and possibly the half shafts as well. This one's leaking oil and it's worn as well. You can see how much play is in that. That would eventually lose drive on the back axle because it will rip the uh, splines off of the uh, drive hub. 
Okay, so I have the components layout on the bench. I have a hub seal leak here. You can see that compared to that one, which is dry. And then, of course, I've got the brake drums. Now, the condition of the brake drums uh, are very, very important, especially the working surfaces. So what I'll do is I'll just bring the camera over here and then we'll have a more detailed look. I'll just briefly skim over this first and then later I'll show you how to measure the drums for ovality. It's been sitting a long while, so there's rust in the bottom. The drum doesn't look too worn, but it is scored. You can see that. That really needs to be skimmed so it's got a smooth working surface. And the other drum here, which had a hub seal leak, is, is not too bad. You can see the working surface there is all right. But what I feel for is um, a concave or should I say convex, sorry, convex feeling to see if it's worn at the back end. If it's um, convex, then basically that'll need skimming or replacing. You can see here the um, oil from the hub leak. It's not excessive, however, the uh, leak needs to be sorted. So what I'm feeling for, again, as I said, I'm looking to see if it's actually convex and uh, whether it's worn on the edges and at the back end here, which it is. And it has quite a raise on there, which would tell me that the drum has already been past its, uh, its best. Basically, the more convexness you have, the longer the brakes are going to take to bed in. OK, presuming you've taken your uh, backing plates off, then uh, what you can do here in a good position to either replace your stub axle or dress it up. Now, what I mean by dressing is getting a fine piece of uh, emery cloth, which is uh, 120 grit, using some WD-40 and just uh, smoothing it down again. Basically, this is just taking the uh, old dirt off it. So, the backing plate, okay, this is a, a Brit part one. It's, uh, okay, it looks the same as what came off it. You have your snail cam adjusters, wheel cylinder fits there, and then the fitting at the bottom for the shoes. Obviously, the 110 is uh, different to the 90. I didn't see an issue with this at all, and we have some spanking new adjusters as well. If you have a problem using original backing plates, you can get adjuster kits, and this uh, is in with regards to the series of vehicles as well. Uh, RTC uh, 3176 and basically you get fitting instructions here. Now these, um, you assemble them, you have to cut the old ones off if they're seized. So uh, just a bit of information for you. Backing plates are handed, so we have right hand back plate is AEU 2496 and for the other side, left hand side is AEU 2497 which you can get from Brookwells. I didn't bother taking the wheel cylinders off, I just cut the pipe. And these are handed as well, which is left hand and right hand because of the way the pipe goes into the wheel cylinder. There's only one supply. And what we have is left hand and right hand here. So I'll give you the part numbers here, which I'm not going to read out. But left hand and right hand are one digit different, which again you can get from Brookwell parts. Nuts for the wheel cylinders are as such as NH605041L and I've ordered four of these because uh, that's two per wheel cylinder. Right, so it's up to you whether you fit your wheel cylinder on your backing plate first or fit it to the axle, it makes no difference. Um, that's a big wheel cylinder on these ones. If you noticed, I cut the pipe, so I'm going to have to make some piping. Now, there's a hole here, backing plate, and it corresponds to this slot here, which you need to clean up on the flange before you go ahead and fit it, because that's for uh, um, seepage or if you have an oil leak. So, basically, this will not fit straight away. It doesn't drop into place, and it's because it's an interference fit. Not because it's Brit part. I did uh, think this myself first, but as soon as I bolted it up, it clicked into place. Getting a bit closer, you can see that it is an interference fit. You'd think at first, no, nah, and that's not quite right. But we have the ring here, which will push it evenly and uh, square it up, so that's not a problem. Now, using the mechanics thing, what I'm going to do, because there's six bolts, you do like a Jewish star you do two triangles, which is um, fitting one into place and then pulling them up, and that will pull the back plate square onto the stub axle without a problem. Okay, so you can see I've actually marked them. Just pull them up, nip them up, and then torque them up. So what you'll see here, I'll just pull this off. This is what has been shaved off as it's been pulled on the stub axle. We didn't get away very lightly here because there's uh, puff pastry uh, rust, 
and mud crammed up in in this aperture here now uh, the shock absorber mount is worn so that will need replacing and this it looks like it's rotted right the way through the bracket it's just one of those things these are old vehicles after i cleaned it up yep there you go it's rotted right through so this bracket is going to need changing so uh, we will do this once we've done the brakes